All righty. Good morning, guys. This is Manny Quinones coming to you guys with another trading. Today, we're going to show you guys how to trade market reversals. Now, market reversals are one of the best, best things to trade in the market because as we know, the goal for Forex is always to do what? Sell high and buy low. Sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, and buy low. Now, when you're getting into the market, especially for me as a trader, what I'm always looking for is I'm always looking for highly probable trades. So I'm, I'm looking for a trade that I can get into that I know is going to be a long-term drop that I'll be able to significantly cash out and catch a lot of pips on and something that's not so risky in the market because there's always plenty, there's always plenty, of, plenty of trading opportunities in the market. But every opportunity is not the right opportunity to trade. And the more you look for trading opportunities in the market, the more you're actually putting yourself at risk. There's this thing where there is quantity over quality. You know, typically when people come into the Forex game, what they are doing once they catch on on Forex is they're typically just looking for a lot of signals. They're looking for you know, uh, a ton of trades to be in. So it's almost like a high, like a junkie that just always, you know, needs a fix that always needs to be in the market. And if you guys have that mindset, that is a mindset that I want you guys to break because I want you to understand it's not about the quantity of the trades that you're getting into. It's about the quality of the trades that you're getting into. Because if I can cheat you guys how to get in at a market high on a larger time frame, on a larger time frame, and you know the market is gonna drop 200, 300, 400, 500, or 1,000 pips, okay, what you guys can do is you guys can significantly stack your orders and cash out and make two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times your money on one trade while having peace of mind. Because can you guys imagine being in 10 different trades and trying to keep up with all the trades at the same time. Always remember that nothing is ever guaranteed in the market. So if you guys are in multiple trades, you always have to have an if-then mindset. Like I had this analysis, so if this happens, then I'm going to have to do this. But if this happens, then I'm going to have to do that. So it, it gets very frustrating to be in so many different trades. This is why it's good to get into highly probable trades, a really, really good trade setup that you can get into that's highly probable, knowing that you can stay in there for a longer amount of time. This way you only have to manage and watch one trade, but every single time there's a pullback, you can get in and cash out on the trade by stacking your order, stacking your order, stacking your order. Okay, so now what we're going to be covering today is we are going to be covering head and shoulder patterns in the market, okay? Head and shoulder patterns are extremely significant or um, in the market and they are, they're easy to spot, okay, in the market. So I'm gonna get right into head and shoulders patterns um, into the market right now. Now there's a couple things that you guys would need to know um, getting, into, uh, getting into a head and shoulders pattern and one is how to actually spotted okay so you would typically see head and shoulders patterns at a market high point and a swing high or a market high is where the market is in a strong rally meaning that the market is going up but then the market would break market structure and then it would actually create and cause the head and shoulders pattern okay so now if you guys do not know what market structure is without getting into anything super, super deep, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you this quick example here, okay? Let me actually make my, uh, my chart full screen for you guys, perfect, okay? So we're gonna come over here, okay? I'm gonna look for an Elliott Wave pattern. Okay, so typically you'll see this, you'll see low, the market goes high, goes low, market goes high, market goes low, the market goes high, and then the market repeats this pattern and the market continues to go higher and higher and higher. Okay, what these are known is these, this is known as market structure. This is known as lows and highs in the market. And lows and highs are what create 
the market structure. It's how you're able to spot uptrends, downtrends, and consolidation points in the market. Okay, so it's very, very important that you know how to spot this out because if you do not know how to spot this out, you're not gonna understand when a head to shoulders pattern is coming. Okay, so let me show you guys quickly. This is a low and then this is a high point, meaning that this was low and this was high. Now when the market retraced or pulled back right here, it created another low point before the market started going back up. Now when the market created this low point, this low point was not lower than the former low. So low, high, now this is known as a lower high because it's still the low point except this low point is higher than that low point. And then the market pushes up. Now the market created a higher high, meaning that this was the low, this was the high, this was the lower high, and this was the next high. This high is higher than this former high, meaning that the market is pushing up and breaking the structure. So the market is still going up. So as the market is creating higher low points and higher high points, the market is showing that it is in an uptrending motion. And then what you can do when the market is in an uptrending motion is you can draw a trend line. So you can take the trend line from the bottom, you can connect, okay? You can go ahead and connect the low points, the lower highs in the market, and you'll start to see peaks in the market. So they'll start to look like mountain peaks in the market, like the, like the Everglaciers, right? You'll see that there's like mountains forming along the trend line. This is how you know that the market is in, an, is in a rally or if that it's a bullish market, meaning that the market is going up. Now, it is the same thing when the market is coming down, okay? Now, let me show you guys here. Right, I'll go ahead from the high point and I will connect some of the low points, right? Let's say we'll, we wanna put it there. So the market, let me get an Elliott wave pattern here for you guys. Okay, so the market is high, creates a low, creates another high. I remember this high is lower than that high, so this is a lower high. Then it creates a lower low because this low is lower than this low and it creates a high, then it creates another low. So. Now we are in a downtrend. Okay, this actually deleted for some reason. Let me put that back here for you guys. Okay, perfect. There you go. Now, whenever you are looking for a downtrend or you're looking for a, fairly, a failing or bearish market, what you wanna do is you wanna connect the lower high points. So in an uptrend, you wanna draw it from the bottom to the top, you know, from an uptrend, you wanna draw it from the bottom going up, connecting the lower highs, okay? And in a downtrend, you wanna connect it from the top coming down. So you wanna connect the lower high points in the market. This is how you actually form a downtrend. And then these are known, as you see, they're like dips. So look at these as, as plateaus, and then these are dips in the market. So these are known as valleys in the market. So look at it as if it's the Grand Canyon where you're walking along and then you could just fall in right into the valley. You come back up and you fall right back into the valley. So you'll be able to spot these or your subconscious will be able to spot these so you can start eventually looking at the chart without them and then you can actually see that the market's already forming a downtrend and the market is already forming an uptrend. That's how you start to make a trade. Now as the market is creating this formation, this market structure, when this market structure is broken, this is where you get to start seeing patterns. Like I'll show you guys specifically before we even get into the trading. Okay, there is three baby patterns I already see over here. Okay, like, um, okay, if, if we come down, there's already three baby head and shoulder patterns that we see over here in the market. And you could draw them out any which way. Okay, now come back over here. Let me get another one. Okay, and then look, if you come back up to a market high point, you'll see that the market would create a high, a low, a high, and when it came back down, right, when it came back down, it was supposed to keep going back up, but it didn't. It ended up creating a lower high, and then the minute that this uptrending market structure was broken, or the minute that this downtrend market structure was broken, as you see here, 
it starts to create head and shoulder patterns. Okay, so market structure breaking is gonna give you the first sign of a market reversal. And what you're looking for is you're looking for these head and shoulder patterns because these head and shoulder patterns are the one of the most significant market reversals that you will see in the market. So today we're gonna to go ahead and we're gonna cover how to trade head and shoulder patterns. Uh, we just actually spoke about how to, how to spot them in the market, but I'm gonna bring up some larger examples and I'm actually gonna show you guys uh, how to mark it up, how to find your take profit points, and how to find entry points with the Fibonacci tool and with candlestick patterns, okay? So let me go ahead. Let's go right over here back to this high. All right, perfect. Let me go ahead and delete this stuff here. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. So as we see here, the market was in a very, very strong momentum right here. Very, very, very bullish market. Strong, strong rally to the upside here. The market was creating highs, right? High, lower high, higher high, lower high, higher high. Then the market rejected, created a lower low and lower high. So the market started downtrending here. So this is where we already see the head and shoulders pattern. Very, very easy to spot, right? So let's come over here. Let's mark this up. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. Now, what you want to do to start marking it up is you want to, the market is already going to give you structure in here. Okay. So let me, before I even do that, the market's already going to give you structure. So the first thing that you guys can do is you guys can take a horizontal line or a horizontal ray. And when the market pushes up and when the market comes back down, right? When the market comes back down, it's going to hit some kind of support level before the market shoots back up. This support level is basically going to be the start of your neckline right here. This is going to be the start of your neckline. So this is the support area that you're looking for in the market. Okay. Now remember, there's two ways to draw this where you could draw it with a fixed line going right across or what you can do um, for those of you because one thing that you always have to remember is that nothing in the market, nothing in the market is, is ever guaranteed. Okay. Nothing in the market is ever guaranteed. So there's never going to be like a specific, specific entry point or whatever the case is. What you're looking for is you're looking for a zone. So what I like to do is when I come to, you know, the first support is I would like to get the rectangle and draw it from the body to the wick, okay? The body to the wick. So I'll get rid of this line, okay? So when I draw this from the body to the wick, all right, of the first support that the head and shoulders created, the first support that the head and shoulders pattern created, what this is doing is this is giving me an entry zone in the market. So this is my entry zone that I'm looking for in the market, okay? So once it creates the left shoulder and it completes the left shoulder here and it pushes back up to the high and comes back down to the shoulder, you know that this is your entire entry zone here, okay? So I'm gonna come back over here. Now I'm gonna get my head and shoulders pattern and I'm gonna draw it from the base. So I'm gonna get from the base, okay? I'm gonna get from the base. I'm gonna draw my first shoulder to the high, come back down to the base, go up to the head right here, come back down to the base, okay? Now I'm gonna get my second shoulder in the market and then come back down to the base in the market, okay? So this is our head and shoulders pattern in the market. Very, 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 very simple. Now, if you wanna be more concise, we would actually put it up like this above it, but I would actually keep it low from the wicks down here okay so now we have our head and shoulders pattern now before okay once we have our head and shoulders pattern before we even talk about trading the head and shoulders pattern what we would want to look for is we would want to look for the projection or the take profit level that the pattern is going to give us so what forex patterns do and what well, price patterns right because there's multiple price patterns in the market, head and shoulders, double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms, rising wedges, falling wedges, 
uh, descending triangles, ascending triangles, symmetrical triangles, rectangular breakout. You know, there's many different patterns in the market. Now, what patterns have and what patterns do for you is patterns do what's known as equal measured moves, and they do it without fail. You'll always see the market give you 100% of the equal measured move. Even when you're in doubt, the market will give you the equal measure move. Okay, so what you want to do is you would want to get, okay, you can come back over here and let's, uh, let's get a horizontal line. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab a segment here. Okay, and I'm going to draw it from the high of the candle, okay, to the base of the pattern. Okay, so I'm going to draw from the high of the candle to the base of the pattern. So this was the height of the movement. Okay, then I'm going to copy the line over, okay, and I'm going to draw it right below where my entry point was at. So I'm just going to bring it right over. See, so all I did was draw, draw the line from the height of the pattern. To the base of the pattern, okay, right by my entry zone, and then I copied the line vertically, right lower, okay. So this is going to give me my take profit level. Then I will come over here. I will get a horizontal line, okay, and I would put my horizontal line right at the base, okay, and then this would give me my take profit level in the market. So this is 100% of my move. And as you see here, I can actually put it a little bit lower uh, right here by the wick. And I would still have gotten my entry right here. Okay. Other people, they would typically like to take a price box. So you guys can also take a price box if you so choose and copy it down. But if you don't like a cluttered chart, you can feel free to just copy the vertical line to the bottom and then create your support baseline as your take profit level. So this is going to be your take profit level okay so let me come over here uh let's get a text in here well first let me come over here let's see how many pips this is in the market okay so we're going to measure this to see how many pips we're supposed to be catching in the market here so we're going to go to the high of the candle right up here to the wick we're going to go right down here to the bottom of the base or to this base okay so we're looking at a 511 pip move so when we had got in around our entry zone, okay, this is 500 pips we could have got right here in the market or more, right? Because I'm going to show you guys how to get in at the right shoulder or at the base of the pattern. So if you guys had, was able to get in at the right shoulder somewhere, okay, you guys would have been looking at a 750 pip move in the market. And once you guys are able to copy the strategy, you know, you guys will be able to do this again and again and again. In the market but you have to follow the rules to a t if you can do this then you guys can be consistently profitable in the market okay so let me come over here let's get my pen i want to create an actual text box down here uh, where is my text mm, here it goes text box so let's come over here edit this and then we'll put this as our take profit level. Okay, and then this is 500 plus pips. Perfect. So here we go. Now we're good to go. All righty. So now we know where the market is going to be coming. Remember, that move didn't happen. Okay, you're still here. You're still forming the right shoulder in the market but you was able to copy it down and you already have your take profit level so price didn't come to the take profit level so forget the fact that you can see this movement okay so now what's the next thing that you're going to do well first and foremost there's two different things that you can do okay um one is you guys can start looking for entry points in the market okay so now what you want to look for is you want to look for how to get in at the right shoulder you want to start to getting in at the right shoulder okay if you miss the right shoulder then you guys would typically look for a break and a retest in the pattern meaning let me come over here okay let's do um, an ABC correction wave oh wow I just had another gentleman enroll in the business very good okay so meaning 
you would typically, when the, when the pattern forms, the market has a way of validating itself. So what the market typically wants to do is the market wants to come down, break out of this entry zone, and then retest it. It'll usually retest the entry zone before you see the push down. And then this would create the downtrend in the market, okay? Now, the market will not always give you the breakout and the retest, okay? But typically, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for the breakout and the retest. So I will show you guys another example of the breakout and the retest with Fibonacci tools. In this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to get in at the right shoulder. Okay, so let's get out of here. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Fibonacci retracement tool. Now to get in on these trades, you know, you're typically looking to get in at a Fibonacci level. Now Fib Fibonacci's, if I can draw the Fibonacci's up for those that do not know, okay, Fibonacci is a very, very significant tool in the market. And the most important numbers in a Fibonacci is the 38.2, the 50, and the 61.8, which is formerly known as the fire your boss, because this is where you'll see the biggest market rejections. Okay, these three points. So if you're putting your Fibonacci upside down, okay, the 38.2 and the 61.8 are the same thing just invertedly. Okay, so that's why these are both entry points to get in the market, but the most significant entry would be the 61.8. Now the 50 is very, very important as well. Now the reason why the 50 is such an important level is because um, the market has an equilibrium point in the market, meaning that the market does not go up forever and the market does not come down forever. And when you guys are starting to use um, EMAs or RSIs or any type of indicators or anything, you know, the market always has a median point. The median point meaning that price always finds a way to come right back to the middle from where it came. So the, the market's always looking to correct itself. The market comes down and corrects itself. The market comes down, corrects itself, you know, from this movement. It always does that. So as long as you're below the 50%, okay, as long as you're below the 50%, then what that's saying is that the market is still in a downtrending motion. When the market breaks above the 50%, you're typically looking for an uptrending motion. So just understand as you get better with using the Fibonacci, that the 38.2, the 50, and the 61.8 are the most significant levels in the market. And you would wanna, when you put up the Fibonacci, this is where you would wanna find entry points. And right by your entry point, you would wanna find candlestick patterns. So we will get into that in one second, okay? So how do we draw our Fibonacci's? So let me come over here. Okay, let's get the Fibonacci back out. So what you would want to do is every time we have a correction in the market from a high to low, high to low, high to low, you know, high to low, you're always looking for the Fibonacci movement. So in this head and shoulders pattern, I'm going to come over here to the high of the body. Okay, and I'm going to put it down, okay, to the low of the body right, to the low of the wick, or I could do to the low of the body, either one, right? If you do from body to body, okay, if you do the Fibonacci from the body to body, you're usually looking for a more concise, like a more concise entry point. If you do it from wick to wick, okay, you're looking more for the range of the price. So it's not much of a difference, okay, and it's a matter of preference. Now, if you see here, what did the market do? From high to low, right? We're looking for one of these Fibonacci levels to be hit. So that way we can see a rejection off these levels. That way we can start preparing and looking for entry points in the market. Now, as you see here, the market came to the 50 and it failed. And that's a good sign. Why? Because that's showing that the market is still downtrending. Now, if you miss the entry at the 50, the market always gives you clues. The market came back down to the 20, pushed back up to the 38.2 and gave you a second entry in the market. The market will always give you clues. You just have to spot the clues in the market. You have to spot and train your eyes in the market. Okay. So before I go there, okay, another trick, just so you guys know, which is really good. If you guys take a trend line, what the market is going to do is, especially 
doing a, a head and shoulders, right? Because we spoke about the market uptrending. Now, in a head and shoulders pattern, the reason why a head and shoulders pattern is good is let me actually get rid of this. Okay, so let me come over here. If the market is in an uptrending motion, right? If the market is in an uptrending motion here, right? And then the market breaks the market structure, okay? When the market breaks the market structure, you will see that it broke out of the uptrend, right? So this is already giving you signs that the market is crashing down. Now, what's really good is that in a head and shoulders pattern, once market structure is broken and it's not creating higher highs and higher lows and it's not following this uptrending line, the first thing it will do for you is at the high point is it will give you the two lower high points to go ahead and start the downtrend in the market, okay? So as long as it's below this, you'll see that the market is still downtrending. Now, if you see here, what did the market end up doing? The market ended up breaking out retesting the downtrend, okay, and then the market took back off, but then the market created a larger downtrend, and then this is where you go ahead, after you catch all your pips here, this is where you readjust your downtrend, and then there you go. Now you have your true trend right there in the market, and you can start following all of these pips down and creating your channel, which we won't get into today, but that is a cool trick just for you guys to learn in the market okay so let's get out of here all right very good all right so now what i'm going to do is now that we put our fibonacci now that we spotted our pattern right we put our neckline which was the yellow line we put our take profit level so we know where our price is coming to we took our fibonacci's we put it from high to low so we put it from the high of the head to the low of the neckline okay and then we seen the rejection go back up we seen the retracement or the pullback go back up and fail. So now that we did this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the hourly now, right? So I'm on the four hours. So just so you guys know, remember, as you go on to different time frames, you will see different patterns in the market, right? So on a daily, if you see on a daily here, right, I'm gonna get this for you quickly. All right, if you see on the daily here, the market was actually creating what's known as a rising wedge in the market, right? Look at this. The market was actually creating what's known as a rising wedge in the market, okay? We was looking at this specifically at one of our meetings and we was actually calling all these pips down. The market had dropped 300 pips before it came right back up to this point, right? So when you go to larger time frames, you can spot larger patterns in the market. And remember, the larger the pattern, the truer, the movements, okay? So the larger the time frame that you spot a pattern, the truer the movement, because you can see a longer and longer and longer time frame, something that's been developing for days and days and days and days, okay? And as you see here, this market created a second high point, so we were already looking for a reversal right over here, and this head and shoulders pattern ended up being that reversal. Now what you'll do is you're gonna start scaling in, so that was the daily. Then we go into the four hour, right? For the four hour, we're looking for all of our patterns in the market, multiple head and shoulders patterns here. Now, once we have our pattern on the four hour specifically, which is a great pattern, what you do is you can come down to the one hour now. Now, once you go down to a lower time frame, the reason why you're scaling in to a lower time frame now, specifically the one hour, one hour is very, very popular, and a lot of people, they tend to look for entry points you know, in the one hour. So the market's gonna give you more clues. So first you would put your Fibonacci's to find your rejection levels. Now you're gonna go into the one hour and you're gonna start looking for candlestick patterns in the market because the market is gonna give you more clues. So now you wanna find reversal candlestick patterns in the market so that way you can go ahead and get into the trade. This is gonna give you your next sign to get into the trade. So let's zoom right in. Okay, let's zoom right in and then see what kind of candlestick patterns they gave us. Okay, now actually let me draw the trend back on here so that way you guys know exactly where the entry points we're looking at. Okay, so let's draw the trend. So we're going to go from the high and then we're going to go to the first head right there in the market. Perfect. So as you see here, right, what did I say? I said if you guys missed the entry at the 50 when the market pulled back, it gave you another entry right around the 38.2, two, 
to get back in. The market is always going to give you signs. So let's go back in. Let's scale in. Okay, perfect. So here goes our first entry and here goes our second entry. And what did we say we're looking for? Candlestick patterns. And did the market give us candlestick patterns? Absolutely, it did. I want you guys to check this out here. All right, let me come over here. I've got a rectangle. Okay, here is our first candlestick pattern. Okay, let's copy this over. Okay, and then here is our second candlestick pattern right here in the market. Voila. So now we have two entry points in the market, which is amazing. The first entry point we see right here, this created confluence in the market. So we have a rejection at the 50. So they, how did we know that the market was going to come down? No, we're, we're waiting, right? It's, it's, it's a waiting game. It's about waiting. So what you're waiting for is at the rejection point, you're waiting for a candlestick pattern to form and complete. So that way you can get in on the opening of the next candle. So what's the first candlestick pattern we've seen right here at the 50 and at the trend? The market created what's known as a bearish engulfing candle. Okay, this is a highly probable candle that you'll see in the market and one that you guys definitely want to spot out. So a engulfing candle means that the second candle, right, whether it's bearish or bullish, meaning that the market's going up, whether it means like here goes another one, there goes a bearish engulfing candle, okay? The candlestick pattern, the, excuse me, the bearish engulfing candlestick pattern means that this candlestick completely overshadows and engulfs the body of the former candle. So you see the market is at a, is at of equal opening and closing or sometimes higher. And then the bottom of the candle where the candlestick closed was lower than this candle. So it completely overshadowed this. This is like, look at this as Shaq. And then look at this as, as, as Shaq's wife, the, the, the little four foot chick. So there goes a seven foot giant and there goes the four foot girl, right? So it completely engulfed that one. And then what you would do is you would wait for the opening of the next candle to go ahead and get in the trade. Now, as you've seen here, there was a big, big push to the upside, right? I can guarantee you that's a significant push and that is quite okay. So let's see how many pips that is from the entry, okay? That is a 32 pip push back up to the high. So you could have potentially got stuck in a 32 pip drawdown. Now that's okay. The market makers have an average stop loss hunt of 30 to 50 pips, meaning that you can see a drawdown as great as 50 pips in the market. It will not always happen, and do not worry, it will not always happen, but it can happen up to 50 pips in the market. And the reason why they do that is because you guys have to remember, okay, for those of you that are novice, for those of you that are like, I do not want to be in any negative trades. I don't want to be in any drawdown. I want you guys to understand that the banks and the brokers are designed to work against us, okay? In order for us to get access to the Forex market, we need to go through the broker. Now, the broker is not our friend. The broker just gives us access. The broker wants to make money off of us. They want to make money off of our losing trades. They want to make money off of our spreads. And the brokers, they collect all of our orders in the market. They know where our entries are at. They know where our stop losses are at. They know where our take profits are at. And they know this, they collect this information and then they manipulate the movements of the market. That's known as market manipulation. You guys see that all the time in the market. And that's because they're not, it's not designed for you to win, okay? It's not designed for you to win. So they're gonna mess with your emotions they're going to scare you out the trade. They're going to make you double guess everything that you thought you, you thought you knew. And then by the time you hit your stop loss or get out the trade, the market is going to go right into your direction and you would have missed this whole 500 pip move. And then you would have been super, super, super duper upset. Okay. So understand that there is a 30 to 50 pip stop loss. If it's any higher than that, then it's definitely not, you know, it, it, you just got into the trade. Um, wrong. Okay. So this is why the market is all about analysis, right? Warren Buffett said, he said that the Forex market is simply a transfer of wealth from the inpatient to the patient. Okay. So you have to be concise with what you're looking at. 
You have to stick to your gut on your analysis, okay, and then just ride the trade. Every single time you get into a trade, you need to know your risk to reward ratio. That's why risk management is so important, right? Because you don't want to get into the trade and say, hey, listen, this is a head and shoulders pattern. I know this is going to be good for 500 pips. I only have a $300 account, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a standard on this account. You can't do that because you're going to wipe and blow out your whole entire account. Okay. The goal of trading is when you lose to lose a little bit and when you win to win big, don't be in a rush to make a million dollars in one trade because the faster you try to get rich, the faster you're going to go broke. Just respect the market, respect the process and slowly and surely continue to grow your account. Okay. If you had a three or $5,000 account, and then you wanted to put a standard and you can handle a 50 pip drawdown or if you can handle a $500 loss, okay, to get a $5,000 reward, which is 500 pips, then put in a standard or a significant position in the market, okay? But trade according to your lot size, always use proper risk management, okay? And never get into a trade where you're not willing to handle your loss in the market because it can happen okay 100 percent. so this was as we said that was a 30 pip stop loss let me come back over here this was a 30 pip stop hunt to the high right here and as you see long fast move equals false breakout so ended up closing next candle opened up right what do we see here we see a hanging man in the market and boom the market started coming back down and the market came back down and then we started our downtrend emotion right there in the market. So this would have been a great entry point to get in the market. Now, in the event of that you did not get in on this trade, right? Because it happens to a lot of people. People don't want to get in on the first move. They'll usually look for the second move in the market or they would wait for the break and the retest. So what was the second entry point that the market gave us? Here we go. The market came, came down, broke back up, and then right at that trend line, the market gave us another pattern right here, which is known as a railroad pattern. This is a second highly, highly reversible candlestick pattern in the market, okay? A railroad pattern is simply when you have two candlesticks, a bullish and a bearish candlestick at a reversal point, so meaning that you're looking for the price to reject, right? Why are we looking for price to reject here? Because it's back by the trend line, right? It's back by the downtrend, right? We're back by the downtrend in the market. So by the trends or by the resistance of the trend, we're looking for the market to come down. So that's why we're looking for the candlestick patterns at this point. Okay. So you come here and then we see what's known as a railroad track. All right, right there. So the market comes up and then what it does is that the market opens and closes around the same price. And then uh, same exact thing, exactly. The market opens and closes at the same price. So you'll see it's very, very tight. It's like trapped right there. This is a reversal pattern. You would wait for this pattern to close, and then you would jump in on the opening of the next candle, meaning that you guys would have got in at the opening of this next candle right here. Now, as, the, as you guys get nicer, what you guys can do is you guys can jump down to the 15-minute, okay, once you found your candlestick pattern, okay, I, I don't believe I can go back this far in the market because I only have 20,000 bars. Okay, I definitely can't. Let me go back to the hourly. Let me see. Uh, I'll try to do it on the 30 minute. Okay, I can do it on the 30 minute, but it's not gonna be the same. Typically, what you would wanna do is you would wanna go to the 15 minute now, okay? You would wanna go to the 15 minute, and then what the 15 minute will do is the 15 minute will give you different candlestick patterns. So remember, on the hourly, this was a railroad track. Okay, and then on the hourly, uh, this was a bearish engulfing candle. Now you see this made different, uh, this made like a hangman, um, so this made a different candlestick pattern. Or if you see here at the railroad track, right, this was a great entry. Um, this ended up making a bearish engulfing candle right here. So now we have a candlestick pattern inside of a candlestick pattern, which is additional confirmation um, in the market. Okay. So this is what's going to give you your stuff. Now, if you guys want to get a little nicer, right? What did we talk about? We talked about using Fibonacci retracements, right? From high to low, you guys can come from the high of this pattern back to the low and look what you guys will see, right? Whether you come to the wick 
or to the body. Okay, let's 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 do this body to body. Let's make it a little more concise over here. Okay, boom. What do you guys see? You guys see more rejection. Look at that. You guys see more rejection at the 618, right? What did we talk about? The 38, the 50, and the 618s are three different entry points to get in. So I put my fibs from high to low, right? Body to body for, for looking for concise entries in the market, right? What do we see over here? We see an evening star, um, uh, a morning star in the end. Uh, excuse me. I hate when this stuff moves on me. Okay. We've seen a morning star right here where the, the market goes up. It creates like a doji and then the market comes down right there. That is another candlestick pattern. So that could have been one entry but you're specifically looking for this area here. This area here, you see the same thing. Here goes another um, bearish engulfing candle. So this is another reason to go ahead and get into the trade. So now we have additional confluence. We had the rejection on the hourly. So from high to low, we've seen the rejection at the 50. So now we're looking for reversals. We've seen candlestick patterns. Then we scaled in to a lower time frame on the 15 minute. We did our fibs from high to low. We seen another rejection at the 61.8. So we, this is fibs inside of fibs. And then we seen more candlestick patterns. So we already had four confirmations or four confluence points to go ahead and get into the trade. And if you did this, you would have been banking in all of this profit coming down uh, to the low side. So you guys would have been able to take profit on these 500 to 700 pips right here in the market. And guys, you could do this again and again and again in the market, okay? Very, very simple stuff. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna come over here, all right? So let's come over here, right? Now what do I see here? Look, right? They can be very difficult to spot, but as long as you guys are paying attention and being cautious in the market, you guys can spot a significant amount of head and shoulders patterns, right? So let's come over here, let me show you again. Okay, boom, that goes a high, low, high, low, high, low. Okay, what do we do? We come right here to our base. So we're, we're going to get, what do we say, from the body, right, to the wick. Boom, there goes our base in the market. Okay, let's come over here. So we're, I'm not going to dissect the trade 100%, but what I am going to do is just show you guys a few examples. So look, here we go, boom, boom, there goes the head. I mean, there goes the shoulder part of me. Here goes the head in the market. Boom, there goes the formation of the right shoulder, however you guys want to put it. Perfect, very good, All right? You just move this over. Perfect, very good. From wick to body, there goes the base of the pattern. There goes the head and shoulders pattern, okay? And then here goes what's known as the break and the retest, right? We just spoke about this. So let me come over here. Elliott motion wave from high to low to high, boom. It's already starting a downtrend. Then the market came, right? It came low and it came back up and then it went high. So the market was already downtrending, right? Let me come over here. Give me one second. Okay, so here goes this little this little inner trend right over here. And as you see here from this inner trend, right, what did the right shoulder do? From the high, it broke, re retested the outside of the trend. So now we already see that the market's coming down. That's one confluence point, okay? Now the market structure broke where the market structure wasn't creating higher highs, did the head and shoulders pattern, and then the market created the two lower highs and started creating the downtrend in the market right here. Boom, there goes our, there goes a confluence point for us right there in the market. And we come over here, we get our fibs, right, from high to low to the base. What are we looking for? We're looking for rejection at the, at the 38, the 50, or predominantly the 618. There we go. We see some rejection at the 618 perfectly with the break and the retest of the trend and then creating the downtrend. That's already three confluence points, and we have not even did any other type of anything. We didn't look for 
more fibs inside of fibs. We didn't look for candlestick patterns. We didn't do none of that. But you see this happens again and again and again. And the market made equal measure move. Let's come back over here. High to low, right to the base. Copy this over. Whoops, that's the fibs. Okay, perfect. We go right down to the base, put our fibs back over here, grab our horizontal, grab our horizontal line. There goes our take profit level right here in the market. Okay, so the market always smashes, but we want to do it from the breakout and the retest. Okay, so that was the break and that was the retest in the market. So there it goes right there. Perfect. And then boom, our take profit was smashed immediately. And then we seen multiple positions to be able to get in. So you can have got in here. And what did we talk about? The break and the retest. There's another point where you can get in the market. Broke out of the structure, retested the base, right? So you would look for another entry right here, and then the market comes down. Okay, so other ways where you can look um, for this is you could look for more Fibonacci levels, you can look for extension levels different things like that. And then the market kept coming down. Now check this out. Let's go ahead. Let's delete all of this, all of this goodness here. Okay, perfect. All right. Now what do we talk about? How the market corrects itself, right? Once the market comes, it comes back up and it creates a new high and it creates a new trend. So look what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go from the high and now I'm gonna create the true trend in the market, all right? So here goes the original trend, the inner trend, right? Which is still, look, still respecting. Just because it exists, it does exist. And then here goes the true trend in the market right here. Now, if we zoom out, what do we see over here, guys? Hmm, hmm, right? And this is gonna be the last example I give you guys. I'm gonna come over here. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot what I was looking at. Here goes another inverted head and shoulders pattern in the market. Right there. Boom. There goes another one in the market. Let me put this a little lower. I'll put this down here for Pete's sakes. Okay. There's another head and shoulders pattern in the market. And even within this, so as you see here, what did it did? Look, this shoulder and they're resting on this support, the head and they're resting on this support, which was the original trend from this head and shoulders, okay? And then the third shoulder ended up resting right here on the, on the true trend. See, so that goes, there was the break and the retest of the trend. Right in the zone, the market took off, okay? There was a small break and retest, and then you was able to cap capture your pips all the way to the upside okay so if you guys follow these steps that i gave you and you look for what i told you to look for in the market you guys will be able to significantly um you guys will be able to significantly follow these procedures and always find your target in the market and always capture your pips okay so this right here was what this was another 300 pips you guys could have caught in the market. So if you guys were able to jump in there, you guys would have been able to take profit in about 55 hours. So you're looking at, what, two days, two and a half days, you would have been in this trade, nice long rally, nice long bullish move, two days, consistent profit, no drawdowns, no worries, no nothing. And you guys would have been able to cash out 381 pips on this trade right here right guys so just follow the follow the steps that i gave you all right remember to look for patterns inside of patterns the market is always going to give you more patterns like if i come over here look the market gave me another head and shoulders pattern it's a it's a sloping head and shoulders pattern right in the market but the market gives you the market always gives you more clues right there's a head and shoulders pattern inside of a head and shoulders pattern. Even here, look, there's a W that goes a W right here, which is another reversal, which is a double bottom, right? I'm gonna come over here, one second. There's my motion wave, perfect. 
as you see here there goes a w pattern in the market and then boom right there goes your break and your retest in the market right from the neckline there goes your your w pattern that's the break and then that's the retest as you guys see see the break and the retest of the w pattern and then the market did the same thing so look at this right let me actually just copy this over i copy this over okay then here goes another pattern right there in the market the market pushed up bullish move retested just a bit wasn't too perfect right but you've seen the other macro right here boom another w so we have two reversal double bottoms as the shoulders and another inverted head and shoulder all within a larger head and shoulders pattern so you can see this small head and shoulders copy this up to the high took your profit rode the wave back down did your other w and then went straight back up into the market okay guys and then even up here look at the high right we talked about this over here there was a head and shoulder pattern right here look there goes a, a triple top formation not perfect but there was another triple top formation right there in the market okay guys so make sure you guys look up price patterns in the market um give me one second let's come over here okay so for those that that work with me directly all right you guys can go to our facebook group which is our fx traders hub okay go to photos okay go to albums okay scroll over to the next page and then right here you will see candlestick patterns and price patterns okay so you can go ahead and get all these price patterns you'll see a whole list of price patterns here and then instructions on how to trade all of them double tops double bottoms things like that okay so you could just simply come over here you can simply come over here and then see the different patterns all right for those of you that do not work with me directly you guys can go simply okay to google okay just go to google or go to babypips.com one or the other and then just look for forex price patterns okay now don't be deceived by google there's going to be a ton of information on here just make sure that you're learning correctly okay and then you'll be able to find a ton of price patterns right here that you will be able to trade and look at and things like that um, in the market what I did do for you guys was give you guys you know entry points with with the Fibonacci levels and candlestick patterns but you could come here and check out more things you see there's plenty other different ways that you can trade in the market you just have to learn the tricks to the patterns because if you don't know the tricks to the patterns and you don't follow the rules specifically what ends up happening is uh the market ends up faking you out and then when the market uh when the market fakes you out you know because you misread something in the market and you don't follow the rules specifically to the t you're going to get caught in a false move in the market and then you're going to be hurting so make sure that you guys are following the rules specifically for the price patterns remember um remember head and shoulders okay look there's another head and shoulders pattern here we actually caught this for a thousand pips all the way up to the high before okay we did do this this was amazing okay and then there was another head and shoulders pattern right at the high so here goes a little head and shoulders pattern and then here goes all the way to the high look 1100 pips all the way up with another head and shoulders pattern and then the market came right back down okay so that's how you guys trade market reversals with one of the most highly probable patterns known as head and shoulder patterns which show reversals in the market all right so guys i want to thank you so much i hope you guys learned a ton if you guys liked what you see here make sure that you guys follow me on facebook or go online and look for more training what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cancel this recording and i will open up a quick q a session so guys give me two seconds once again my name is manny quinones